God, Jesus and redemption and make up your own mind whether he could possibly be acting in the power of the true Holy Spirit. The heaven has a north and a south and an east and a west. Consequently, it must be a planet. The Bible said he measured the heavens with a nine-inch span. Now, the span is the difference, the distance between the end of the thumb and the end of the little finger. And, and that Bible said, in fact, the Amplified Translation translates the Hebrew text that way, that he measured out the heavens with a nine-inch span. Well, I got a ruler and measured mine, and my span's eight and three-quarter inches long. So now God's span is a quarter of inch, a quarter inch longer than mine. So you see, that faith didn't come billowing out of some giant monster somewhere. It came out of the heart of a being that is very uncanny the way he's very much like you and me. A being that stands somewhere around 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple hundred pounds, a little better, has a span of eight and, I mean, nine inches across, stood up and said, Light be! And this universe situated itself and went into motion. Glory to God. It's all a copy. It's a copy of home. It's a copy of the mother planet. Where God lives, he made a little one just like his and put us on it. Yeah. God's reason for creating Adam was his desire to reproduce himself. I mean a reproduction of himself. And in the Garden of Eden, he did that. He was not a little like God. He was not almost like God. He was not um, subordinate to God even. And Adam is as much like God as you can get. Just the same as Jesus, when he came into the earth, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He wasn't a lot like God. He's God manifested in the flesh. And I want you to know something. Adam in the Garden of Eden was God manifested in the flesh. Welcome back to Truth Seekers. So Kenneth Copeland says that <clears throat> Adam was God manifested in the flesh. The Bible says there's only one God. God doesn't lie. <coughs> Jesus is always talking about his word. You know, in the beginning was the word, um, and the word was made flesh, uh, talking about himself. And Jesus said, man lives not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That God says in the Bible that his word is magnified above his name, and we're constantly exhorted to search the word. And here we've got this contrasting that where the Bible says there's only one God, many places, many places. So you've got Adam now, so we've got at least a couple of gods here, right, yeah, guys? Also, how, how could, if Adam was God, how could eating the fruit be a sin? Is he sinning against himself? Um, and then did he toss himself out of the garden because he didn't like himself? Has he got some kind of... Uh, well, you know, that brings up an interesting point because then they follow a guy named Branham. They mention the latter rain there. And right. he said he was against the Trinity. So, so if there's no Trinity, I guess they're thinking that yeah. he's not sinning against himself because they're not all one. Uh, and so they're totally divorced from what is considered Orthodox Christianity. But the Bible says many places, again, there's only one God. And Copeland has made God into an Adam. But we've shown film in the past mm -hmm. where Benny Hinn and Paul Crouch talk about that they are little gods, and we're little gods. Well, God says there's only one God. No other big gods, no medium gods, no little gods. There's one God. And then the planet part, that, that sounds like Mormonism. They have Kolob, and this guy's got some other planet out there where God's, God is at home, and, and he put himself down here, or we just kind of... The, the reason we bring this up, um, in a recent uh, edition of Christianity Today, they talked about how Benny Hinn, and Benny Hinn's into all this stuff, 
um, and how Benny Hinn, and we'll see Benny Hinn later on, maybe not tonight, but on the next film that we'll be, be seeing, but Benny Hinn is kind of, his viewpoint of, of how God acts is sweeping the continent of Africa. And we, on our website, we've got a prior program of ours that's an expose of Benny Hinn, a lot of his false prophecies, you know, things saying things like, all the homosexuals are going to be killed by God by 1994, 95 at the most. Uh, God was going to, Jesus was going to appear on stage with him. Um, that if dead people, if relatives put their dead relatives' hands after they die in a home, on the TV set when he's on, they're all going to come to life. There's many false prophecies with, with Benny Hinn. But he's flamboyant, and since TBN has such a big following, and it has so many stations around the world, the people in Africa think that's the Christianity that's happening in America. And while it is a Christianity that's happening to some, a lot, so many people are unfortunately deceived. And Roger Oakland talks about that. Mm -hmm. And Christians can be deceived. We're constantly warned in Scripture how not to be deceived, to check everything, check the spirits, check the spirits of people, check them against the Word of God because God doesn't contradict Himself. Any, any thoughts on that, guys? Well, I think even if you look at the Old Testament, uh, I remember wondering as a child, how come these God would do all these miracles and pretty soon the Jews would be out following false gods? And you look at, at all through the history of man, it seems every generation comes up with, uh, a, so how, why would we think that somehow we're above that and that our church is, is okay when, when the whole history of it is, is man being deceived, you know, instead of listening to getting into the Word of God, they choose to follow a person, so Satan only has to take that person down the wrong path, and he gets everybody that follows him, so that's the perfect way to, for Satan to go fishing. Yeah, and you were brought up in Ireland. If you, those of you who weren't watching last week, we had an extended conversation between Sean Lavelle here and a, another guy who was questioning how much he knew about Ireland. Sean was there for the first about ni roughly 19 years of his life, and he goes back all the time, sometimes for several months at a time. And uh, bring, being brought up as a Roman Catholic, just like you are, but brought up in a country where it's overwhelmingly Roman Catholic, yeah. that's, we've tried to show that they've so deviated in the last thousand years or more yeah. from the Word of God that they've become a whole different gospel preaching church. I mean, Vatican II documents state that Mary brings us the eternal gifts of salvation. And that's where Roger Oakland is going to go in, in the video we're going to get into in a minute, another seven and a half minutes or so. And well, actually, the, the first section will probably be ten minutes. But he, he gets into tying how all of these things are coming together. We talked last week about the Bible talks about the Antichrist and that there's a harlot associated with the Antichrist who rides the beast, the Antichrist, and that she's a, obviously a religion. She's committed spiritual fornication with all the kings of the earth. It's chapters 17 and 18 of Revelations, but it gives us clues as to who this is. And it says that this spiritual harlot has committed fornication, spiritual fornication with all the kings of the earth, and it's a city, a city that sits on seven hills. And of course, Rome is long boasted, the Catholic Church boasts that it's a, that they're in a city sitting on seven hills. And we showed film of the golden goblet that the Pope uses in everything for the sacraments, um, the Eucharist, and it talks about a golden goblet, and talks about that they have colors of purple and scarlet, and we showed pictures of these priests, uh, bishops and cardinals streaming out in scarlet and purple. It just goes on and on, and when you think of one religion that is, you were saying earlier, what were you saying about the influence of, of the Pope and the Catholic Church, even now, but it's going to grow even later. <clears throat> yeah, who, you know, we, I think the whole world has heard of the Pope. He probably has, has more influence than I think any <clears throat> other human being on, on earth. He's recognized by every corner of the earth, whether it's South America, North America, Europe, you know, Asia, he, he is the most recognizable man, and the influence that he has, especially with the media along with him, and, and him being the spiritual leader, recognized by the likes of Billy Graham, Chuck Colson, and we can, we can name many so-called or evangelical leaders that, that recognize him as the most spiritual, influential spiritual leader mm -hmm. uh, in this day and age. 